Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. We've got our hoodies on this today. It's got a little bit chilly outside, so uh, back to the back to the hoodie in there. And you actually need the fire this morning. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, have that nice and toasty. So um, here's a shout out to Matt Daring. He was our Roth Rock uh, fanatic. He's now living down in Texas. He was our director of campus ministry. So uh, <laughs> just a shout out to him. And uh, of course, I don't have any coffee in here, Matt. You know, you know that. So, so it's only water. <laughs> it's only he water knows. in there. So um, we wanted to. We're going to be continuing with Acts chapter two. But one thing I want to just uh, say is, I'm becoming increasingly concerned uh, about the mental health impact of these stay-at-home orders and so forth. I understand what we're supposed to be trying to do. But I also understand that this is having a, uh, an emotional and, and, and mental health impact on a lot of people. So I encourage you to honor the uh, spirit of, of what we're trying to do as far as uh, socially distancing and so forth and so on. But you need to get out of your house. You need to get out and take a walk. You need to get out and get some fresh air. You need to get out and at least maybe see some people, even if you're walking and you're, they're across the street from you, or if you're, maybe you can walk with somebody, then you're six feet apart, 10 feet apart, whatever you wanna to, want to do, but at least to interact with some people. So I'm just concerned uh, at, about the mental health impacts of everything that's going on as well. We don't hear too much about that uh, in the news. We're just obsessed with the, the numbers and the cases and the hospitalizations mm -hmm. and the deaths and all that kind of stuff. And we need to be aware of how people are processing all of this and all the information that they're taking in as well. So check on your neighbors, love them well. Acts chapter two, the coming of the Holy Spirit. This is exciting here. So we're gonna- All right, I'm starting off today. All right. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together and bewildered it because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? How, then how is it that each hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Jerusalem, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Mm -hmm. Then Peter stood up, continuing in verse 14, then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd fellow jews and all you who live in jerusalem let me explain this to you listen carefully to what i say these men are not drunk as you suppose it's only nine in the morning no this is what was spoken by the prophet joel in the days in the last days god says i will pour out my spirit on all people my your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. 
I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, and he knew what, that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was indeed what was, what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Continuing on with verse 42, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All right. So, wow. There's a lot in here. Okay, so we're going to be at this for the next three hours, so just sit back and relax. Join us. We're going to try and get through this quickly. Father, we thank, we're thank. we thankful for this um, time that you've given us together. And we ask, Lord God, for the power of your presence uh, with us now as we dig into the amazing work of your Spirit in and through your people, the church, gathered together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 This is the birth of the church, the Holy yeah. Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost. So uh, Jesus appears to his disciples over a period of, of, of 40 days after uh, the resurrection and appears to as many as 500 at once. But uh, then uh, his ascension occurs and there's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I, I think this is really cool in that when the Spirit is poured out that the disciples start praising God in the people's native tongues that are gathered mm -hmm. together in Jerusalem from all these different parts. So they, they're hearing the praises of God in their native tongue. And so that's one of the things, I think there's a confusion sometimes on what it means to be uh, speaking in tongues. Here, supernaturally, God gave them the ability to speak a different language that they didn't know to praise God in, in the tongue of the people that were coming. So that is one of the cases of speaking in tongues. Uh, in another case, there might be somebody speaking in tongues and there's somebody to interpret. But I think the church sometimes gets way off kilter on this issue. Uh, and um, there's some churches that uphold like speaking in tongues as the spiritual gift that you have to kind of show to be a leader in the church. And that, I think, is very pres presumptuous. Uh, we're given the gifts of the Spirit as God sees fit. It's not up to you and I to say, oh, I think I need this, this gift in order to be able to be used by you, uh, by you, God, for your purposes. And if you don't give me that gift, I guess I'm not going to be, you know, be used by you. That's not the way it works. God has given each believer 
exactly the gift that he or she needs to proclaim the glories of God right here, right now, in this location. You know, think about it here in State College where we're at. There's people coming to Penn State from something like, I think it's like maybe close to 100 countries around the world or some, some, some amazing amount of countries around the world. Guess what? They all have to learn English to attend the university. Mm -hmm. So God has already, you know, kind of done the hard work, the plowing of the fields that here the university is bringing people from all over the world, from many countries in which we cannot send missionaries, and God has placed us right here. What a great thing. We don't actually have to, uh, the Spirit doesn't have to give us the ability to speak in all the different languages because they're speaking in our language. Yeah, and not to get off track a little bit, but I think, too, you may have a gift, and you don't think you have that gift, but God will stretch you a little bit. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, just look at me every morning here. <laughs> right. This is not. <laughs> Not my gift, but yeah. Anyway, well, it is though. You know, right? well, so as we kind of are faithful and, and trusting God, He will that's give right. us yes. what we need. That's right. He, he gives us exactly what we need to carry out the mission. And so here it is: the outpouring of the Spirit. You have that same Spirit that was poured out upon the disciples. But a lot of times you might not think you do, but that's God right. will give you a little nudge, and He'll be there. That's right. The, the, Even if you don't do it perfectly. The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, the, the one who spoke creation into existence, the, the power of the triune God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you have exactly what you need to carry out God's mission today. So Peter then addresses the crowd, and um, he pulls no punches in the preaching, uh, because as he goes through, he's basically saying, hey, this is Jesus. He is the one who is been, uh, you know, uh, lifted up by God. He's the one that God sent. He has performed all these signs, wonders, miracles, all of this, his teaching and everything. Uh, and it says here, this man in verse 23 was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. God knew exactly what he was doing. In fact, it says in the scripture that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. In other words, God knew the price he would have to pay uh, to give us freedom, a free will, to reject his love, and the price he would have to pay to restore us into a relationship with us. You know, see, God is love, but God is also just. And so this was what had to, had to take place, that Jesus had to give himself fully and completely. He's the only person who walked the face of the earth that was in complete obedience with the Father. And because of that, He's the only person that could go to the cross. He didn't have to pay for his own sin. He went to the cross for you and for me to pay the price for our sin. And so that's what he did. For, for the express purpose and foreknowledge of God in verse 23. And you, and say, but that doesn't say that we aren't um, part of the problem of, mm -hmm. of why he was put to death. But he says, uh, and you with help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross. You know, that really cuts to my heart as well. Because it's my sin that nailed him to the cross. Mm. It is our sin that has nailed him to the cross. So we can't just look at them and say, oh, look what mm -hmm. they did back right. then. It is actually my sin that drove him to the cross. Uh, it is my rebellion against God. Uh, God raised him from the dead, so there's the resurrection. That's the amen on everything. God has accomplished this. It's done. It's complete. And uh, so... You know, Peter goes on and talks about David, uh, prophetically speaking, that uh, about Jesus, who, call, who calls a descendant of David his Lord. The Lord says, mm -hmm. my Lord, sit on my right hand. Mm -hmm. And so David is speaking prophetically about uh, Jesus is in the lineage of David, but he is David's Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's David's Lord. Uh, and then um, at, at the end of the sermon... Like with verse 38, that Peter in his Pentecost sermon, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. This is the message of the church, that there is forgiveness of sins in and through Jesus Christ, that if we repent and turn to Jesus, that he will receive us and a promise is for you and for your children. And that, that then 3,000 are baptized. Mm -hmm. And that promise is for, for everyone. 
It's for the children, it's for the, the adults, it's for everyone. It, that's, that's the gift. It is not something we've earned or deserved. It's, some, it's not something we made a decision for, uh, for. God has made the decision for us. He is the one who has come to us and says, come to me, come to me. I have accomplished all this for you and received the gift of baptism in which he's saying, I'm going to place my name on you. So when we're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, God is placing his name on you and he, his promise is you are ado his adopted child into his family. What a great gift. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. So that's the, all that is being poured out. And then um, finally he talks about, then there's a little change with the last mm -hmm. part you let read, mm -hmm. which is the fellowship of believers. And uh, there's four things they're doing there. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That's what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. right? That's okay. what we're, we're doing. And to the fellowship, we can have fellowship of some sort, even mm -hmm. if, if we're physically apart from each other right now. To the breaking of bread, that's speaking of communion, which we will get, when we gather mm -hmm. together together, we'll be able to commune together to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin. And to prayer and we get we can pray together so this is what they did daily and now this this virus is actually opening the door for us to do this daily <laughs> we didn't do that before so god maybe he's like hmm maybe we got to reorder what yeah. they're doing so maybe. what do you think what do you think maybe. of that <laughs> so, you know god can bring good out of any situation yeah so yeah. even in the midst of this even in the midst of this yeah one thing, one other final thing, I, I like how it says uh, they shared everything in common. Now, we don't, we're not even close to doing that mm -hmm. right now, but I would say, I would encourage you and maybe challenge you to think about how can we talk to our neighbors, build relationship with our neighbors, and then maybe we don't all have to buy every piece of equipment that's out there. We can share things. I really appreciate our neighbor that had moved, uh, to, she was across the street, moved down to Atlanta, Georgia area because that's where her grandkids were. And when they left, she said, here, you can have our, here, you can have our snowblower. I'm like, I don't use a snowblower, but uh, okay, that's fine. But now when it snows, I don't consider that my snowblower, I consider it the neighborhood's mm -hmm. snowblower. So I'll just kind of walk around and do other people's driveways if it snows. Now, I didn't even break it out this winter. I mean, it was so yeah. pathetic of a winter. But that's an example of like, what do we, if we had a better relationship with our neighbors, do we all really need to have all these things that mm -hmm. we only use once in a great while? Can we not share things? And that then frees up our income to be able to help those who truly have need instead of every one of us buying every single thing that's out there. So just think about that a little bit of what the early church did and how we might be able to uh, replicate that. What are yeah. what are some things you? Well, no, when you're talking about neighbors. I mean, we had when our kids were little, the neighbor next door would just bring bags of clothes over for our girl and Paul for all of them. You know, so they were that was a huge blessing. But yeah, I love how the disciples are just everyone in need. Um, yeah, they're just praising God the whole time, and the Lord blessed that, and He added to their number. Yeah, that's that's uh, a great witness to the rest of the world, our love for each other. Yeah, no fear. For each other. So think about that, and uh, that's a challenge, I think, for mm -hmm. all of us in the society in which we live in. So we can, yeah. we can pray together. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your amazing grace and forgiveness. Thank you so much for the words that have been revealed. Thank you so much for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord God... Uh, teach us your ways. Help us to walk in them, to bring glory and honor to you in and through Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, who has poured out his, the spirit of the, uh, of the Holy God upon us and has adopted us into his family in our baptism, where he has placed his very name on us, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Have a great day.